Abuse, a word that has been kept in the closet. How many women out there are abused daily by their boyfriends, their husbands, sometimes even their fathers? Really bad abuse. What do these women really go through? They have no one to reach out to, they keep it inside, and their life becomes a tragedy. Well, today we're gonna to hear from a woman who was abused for several years, a strong woman that you will see today, but a woman that was weak at one time is going to explain to you how she got into this situation and what she did to get out. Next, on Jody in Malibu. Today I have a guest by the name of Jinx who's going to talk about something that is hidden in the closet a lot of times and that's abused women. They get involved with the wrong men but there is a light to the end of the tunnel and we're going to discuss this topic right now. I welcome you Jinx. Thank you. It's I'm nice so, to be here Jody. Well I'm so happy that you have come to share your story because I, I have and I've done it because I know there's women out there who, who need to hear it, who need to hear what I have to say which is the light at the end of the tunnel doesn't have to be a train. It doesn't have to be something that's going to run you over and you don't have to be scared. You really don't have to be scared. Let's start out by um, how you grew up. So we kind of have a basis of the kind of... Uh, well, I grew, I grew up in an Italian family. Uh -huh. uh, we're raised to basically get married and have children. So uh, I wasn't ever thought I would have to take care of myself. And I was basically told I always wanted to be an artist but my dad said you know you need to get a trade where you can take care of yourself in case it doesn't work out when you get married so work was always sort of the thing you do when other things don't work secondary out. to the yeah. marriage right. so I never really was raised up to to make decisions which sets I believe women up mm -hmm. for abuse because when you meet a man who's going to make all your decisions for you 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 comfortably fit into that because you've experienced it your whole life and most people wouldn't be comfortable in a situation like that I because see. if you've made your decisions all your life and you suddenly meet a man who's trying to make all your decisions for you you're gonna say excuse me right. but uh, I don't think so yeah but uh, if you've been raised to get a man and make him happy and be his missus in other mm -hmm. words, then then you you get locked into situations and when you are this type of person, also my, you know, there was spanking. Uh -huh. You want to call it a form of corporal punishment, right. as you will. And I'm not saying my parents were abusive, mm -hmm. but back in the 50s, even teachers were doing corporal were punishment. Yeah. Uh, I believe that also sets your children up, mm -hmm. the girls for being abused and the boys for abusing. And, and there are some men who are abused, so you could also be setting your sons up for being abused That's by true. women. That's it's true. not just a one-way deal. Although it's generally heard of more the other way. So uh, did you then, you, well, we'll get to the part you dated, obviously, mm -hmm. in, in high school. Mm -hmm. Normal guys, you weren't a Normal or... guys, but of course being very overwatched, uh, being, you know, kept pretty much an eye on me. I was the same boyfriend all through high school and in the same town and, and all that, so yeah. So how did you meet the man that basically ruined a lot of your life at the time? Um, I was working in a restaurant out in the west side and um, he came in as a client mm -hmm. and um, I must say he was very good looking mm -hmm. and uh, he had that kind of thing going on. Uh, come, he came from a theatrical background. His, his parents were both from that background as well as himself so he kind of had it going on. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in that way. So and, he, was he in the theater also? Yeah. Um, no, he was mostly into just doing like films. I see. You know, not actual theater, theater, but uh -huh. uh, grew up in it, grew up in films and theater. So the first thing that attracted you was probably this very good looking man. <laughs> yeah, hello, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, um, we had the, the eye contact and the attraction and everything. And of course, uh, being uh, 24 years old and impressionable, uh, asked me, you know, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? And why doesn't he pick me up tomorrow and we'll decide? Oh, is that just like just that? Just like that, right? I yes, see. which I guess kind of could have been a clue there. But Now, how, was he much older than you? Or he was he... seven years older than me. Yes, okay. he was, uh, which is not a lot. Mm -hmm. But I had never actually dated anybody older than me. And I'd also never actually dated anybody quite as suave mm -hmm. and sort of had it together kind of thing going on. I see. Because let's face he came to pick me up and he had this like sports car going on and uh, go to his house and he's living in Malibu overlooking the ocean and uh -huh. uh, whoa, you know, so the package was real pretty. And he probably treated you really great. Oh, you know, only the best restaurants and flowers and the best dates and the second date uh, takes me to the um, theater on Doheny, the Writers Guild. And uh, up goes the curtain, and there he is starring in a film. And I'm like, okay. Oh, wow. I had never <laughs> mentioned that to me before. So that was sort of interesting. So your head was just swimming with all this glamour. Oh, yeah. Especially, and I came from a background where my parents sort of liked that sort of thing. I was always brought up. I watched uh, movies my whole entire life. I uh -huh. mean, we were just into films. Right. And, you know. Obviously, with the name Jinx, I was named after <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting a film name. actress named Jinx Falkenberg. And back in the day, um, so I was supposed to be born on Friday the 13th, so they thought that would be a cute name. <laughs> uh, P.S. So I was raised to be sort of, you know, I think most people are, even today, overwhelmed by celebrity. Well, yeah, I mean, you look at all the gossip things on television, everything we want to know. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going back to the 70s, so it wasn't that bad mm -hmm. however to even get a glimpse inside of it was kind of rare at that time there wasn't that many things going on really where the person like me could access things like premieres and stuff like now, that. How long did he keep up this facade of being Mr. Perfect? Uh, About a year after he moved me out of my place that I had in Malibu and moved me into his place and after he got me to quit working at the restaurant as a cocktail waitress and quit working in films and commercials because it was a little too intimidating for him. Uh, got a job in a hair salon, so not too far away from where he lived. Mm -hmm. And then it started to change. Then things started to change because I no longer had the income I had before and I long, no longer was independent. And of course we're going back to the day of no cell phones and uh, mm -hmm. and no ways to call for help. There was no women's shelters, there was no, people didn't even talk about being battered. Mm -hmm. I'm only talking about it now and it's 30 years later. Right. So it, what It's he not made an you easy do, thing to talk about. So what he made you do is basically just rely on everything, on him. Of course, they take away your power and as they're doing that, you see, um, they start out by, by telling you, you know, you'd be nothing without me, look I take care of you, nobody would take care of you like I do. And, and then they isolate you from your friends, and then you can no longer go out as much as you used to, and then you're watched, especially with him. And uh, then it got to what to wear. I couldn't wear prints because he didn't like them, and I had to wear sexy clothes. But then, of course, if I got hit on, mm -hmm. I got hit on. <laughs> so you were supposed so, to look sexy, but no other man was supposed to notice you. Well, they sexy. were supposed to notice me, but if I had eye contact, that was my bad. I see. You see, so it was like, um, I might as well had a burqa on because I had to look down, okay? So uh, as far as my freedom, you could say I was wearing a burqa. Yeah. But as far as the world saw, I was doing a lingerie on the outside long before Madonna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How were you abused? How, what did he do? Was it real physical? Psychologically, physically, um, just about every way you can abuse somebody. Vocally, yeah. Serious, death, death-defying, 
choked into unconsciousness many times. Uh, I had a gun put to my head on several occasions. I had cat, a cat that he used to threaten to hurt my cat, and he had two children that I helped raise. And of course, once I was living with them and attached to the children, they would beg me not to leave, even if I ever did get up enough gumption to leave. However, the more emotionally involved he became with me, and the harder I tried to fix him, mm -hmm. not knowing I was broken. Right. Uh, obviously, because if you're if you're staying in a situation like that, Jody, you're broken. I was going